Good afternoon and welcome to the LIU Learn On webinar series. The topic this afternoon that I'm presenting is on free digital literacy and audiobooks. My name is Valerie Lill. I am the Assistive Technology Trainer and Consultant from Lincoln Intermediate Unit. And in today's webinar, I'm going to be sharing some resources that are appropriate to use with both um, your regular education students and they're also accessible to students who have special education needs and in audio formats or digital formats so i will so these resources are appropriate for across the spectrum as far as ability levels and ages so if you've been through one of these webinars before you know we have a standard set of introductory slides that i'm going to go through the first one is, this is a list of our team in the departments that are presenting these webinars to you. If you need my contact information, it's right here at the bottom, Valerie Lill. If you need um, additional support information, I do have a slide in at the end of the slide deck with um, some further contact information for me. I just wanna start by going over some Zoom webinar meeting norms. Um, if you this is your first webinar with us on Learn On, you'll notice that it's a little bit different than your typical Zoom. The chat, the microphone, and the camera are turned off. Um, this is because we typically have a larger number of attendees on these webinars, so we did disable that. Um, if you look at the bottom, there is a Q&A where you can post questions, but they will be visible to everyone. And we do have somebody monitoring the Q&A if questions come up during the webinar. You also have the option to raise your hand if you would like to unmute your microphone. But I'd really suggest just using the Q&A if you have a specific question. And something important too for, our, for our educators is don't forget to complete the Act 48 credit link once the webinar is over, that should come up for you automatically. LIU 12 resources, again, Act 48 credits. At the end of the webinar, you're going to be redirected to a form to complete to earn your Act 48 credit for your participation. If you're a Pennsylvania educator, please be ready with your PPID to fill that out. Um, for individuals who are not able to attend the webinars live, as sometimes they are doing online instruction or have other commitments, um, we do archive all the webinars and there's a bitly of a direct link to the webinars. And this will include the Google Slides for each webinar and the video. And of course, our resource site. That is where you'll find out about upcoming webinars and upcoming office hours that you may be interested in attending. Expectations for online learning, as you are probably finding out, are going to be different than what is typical. Every district has its own continuity of education plan, and this will depend on what district you're in as to which um, model they're choosing. Some districts are just doing enrichment and review activities. Other districts are providing new instruction. One thing that's very important and is relevant given my role as an AT specialist and universal design for learning is the idea of faith, a free appropriate public education that still applies to online instruction for both students with disabilities and without disabilities. So again, these resources I'm hoping can help a little bit in this area is we have to ensure our students with disabilities have equal access to the same learning opportunities digitally online as they would if they were face to face in the classroom. And again, some of the resources I'm gonna to share today, I'm hoping will show you some options for your students that have disabilities and are useful for students without. We need to change our expectations for online learning for our students. Less is more. We need to prioritize and balance. That's one reason we're keeping these webinars short. Less is more, giving you the information you need in a shorter period of time. Video is important. Um, it's really important, especially for the little ones, but even the older ones to see your face for that social emotional learning component because you know they might be feeling a little bit lonely without you. Um, Keeping in mind limiting the length 
of your videos that you're presenting. A good rule of thumb, the age of the students is the number of minutes max. So we shouldn't be putting, you know, half hour videos for our students to watch. We need to be clear in our expectations. Um, as a mom, I'm running into this with some of my son's online learning. I'm not always sure what he's supposed to be doing. So make sure the objectives and expectations of the learning are clear. And give a rough idea of the time it would take to complete a task. If you think it's going to take 20 minutes, keep in mind that if you have students with disabilities in your class that are receiving online instruction, it may take them longer to complete the same tasks. Other students may finish very quickly. And it's always important for instruction, whether it's virtual or if it is in person, organize and sequence instructions. Excuse me. So, Getting then to the topic of today's webinar, <clears throat> what I'm doing today is I want to share with you the keyword being free, I love freebies, share some free resources for digital books and audiobooks. Some are one or the other or some are both and I'll go through them and tell you that. Again, these resources are not just useful for, you know, obviously working in assistive technology, I support um, staff who work with students with disabilities. However, these certainly are beneficial for your reg ed students to use um, and your L's because some of the resources do have books translation available in multiple languages. And of course, students with disabilities. So really, these resources could benefit a variety of students. <clears throat> the first one I'm gonna talk about is Audible Stories. Now again, I am sure many of you are already familiar with Audible. It runs through Amazon, it's the audio books, you pay for a subscription service. Well, Audible Stories is a part of Audible. I have a lot of hyperlinks in my presentation. What I implore you to do is, to, likely tomorrow, the webinars, videos, and the slide decks are uploaded to our web, Learn On webpage, but it also has been put here in the chat for you also, the slide deck. So either you can download the slide deck now or you can do it later. That way you have access to these hyperlinks. Because if you attended any of my other presentations, you'll see I do a lot of hyperlinks because I'm trying to share resources with you. Audible Stories has audio books. So if you're looking for digital books with pictures, this is not what you're looking for. These are Audible Stories. Again, think about it. if you listen, I listen to audible books, audio books all the time. You don't have the words with it. You just listen to the story. And while schools are closed, Audible Stories, now this isn't all of Audible. Specifically, this hyperlink is going to take you to Audible Stories. They are currently free. I do not know how long that's lasting for, I, but a lot of, but right now they are free during the COVID-19 issue. The stories range in age. So these are good, they have stories for as young as preschool. And again, we're not even necessarily preschool or your students who are reading at that level or your pre-readers um, up through teens. So there's quite a large age that's addressed. There are some, books that you may be familiar with available in Audible Stories. However, there are some that are Audible Story originals that you won't find anywhere else, and those are indicated on the book. It'll say on the, when you see the cover that it's original. One nice aspect, and I did talk about some of these books would be appropriate for L's. Here's one. The, there's narration available in five different languages. I don't know what they all are off the top of my head. You can look on the website, but you can, so if you have students that are Spanish speakers and you want them to hear the same story as the rest of the class, again, this is a resource you could use. One nice thing about these books, which isn't the case with all audio books, is they're read by actual people. It's not a digitized voice. So if you listen to book, books on Audible, you're probably familiar with that. Um, the next one is Epic. Epic is online, it is also an app you can download. I will say I know a lot of Educators are familiar with Epic. I have used, when I was in the schools, I used Epic all the time with my students. So there's a link to the web page. You can make a free teacher account. It has digital books, audio books, and videos. Not all of the digital books have, re, have a read to me option or have an audio option. However, so some of them are just digital texts. 
However, other ones do have that option where you can have the books read aloud to you. And again, that's great if you have a class of students whose reading levels, you know, you might have some students who are significantly below the reading level of their peers, finding a book that has the digital book for the students on grade level to read and the students who are struggling readers can listen to the audio version and hear that same text. They currently have free remote student access until June 30th. And again, um, you may already have an account with Get Epic. I know a lot of educators already do, but that's just something else they're adding due to the COVID-19. Um, Get Epic has a mix of fiction topics and nonfiction from early readers up through middle school. Um, just as I'm an assistive technology person and come from a special education background, I used to use these books all the time to for if I had life skills, fourth and fifth graders who were in content areas, you know, they were out for science and social studies in reg ed, but then were in life skills for the remainder of their academics due to other needs. Uh, you could find some simpler books that addressed, you know, content areas, but in an easier format for them to understand. For example, I remember reading books on like colonial America or geography, but they had some easier books on those topics. You can also research um, on your search. There's different methods of searching. Again, in the interest of time, I can't show you. I could do a whole webinar just on Epic. You can search by reading level. And another thing, there are books in multiple languages, and I listed them there, English, Spanish, French, and Chinese. Now, it's not like the Audible stories where it's going to translate the book for you. This is going to be some books are written in Spanish, some books are written in French. But again, for your L's, that's something good to have. As an option. The next one I'm going to share with you is called LibriVox. And this one you may not be as familiar with as some of the other ones. These are auto recordings of books in the public domain. So they're not going to have a huge variety or there might not be some, you know, fun commercially available text. These are going to be public domain books. So a lot of older or classics. These are also um, human voices reading them, which is great. They're actually read by volunteers who volunteer to record these specifically for this organization. They do have a mix of both fiction and nonfiction books. Typically the age level, um, I've been doing some research, how they advertise it on their website. They do say elementary through high school. I would say upper elementary to high school. Definitely more for your middle school and high school students. Now again, this is not digital plus audio recording. This is strictly just a dig an audio, excuse me, an audio recording of the books. But again, there are some classic books, I don't know off the top of my head, but like something like, you know, a Charles Dickens book or some of those classics that are old enough to be public domain, those you could hear, the ones that have been recorded by volunteers, you could have your students listen to them if they're not capable of reading them. And also there are numerous, I couldn't even count them and listen there, more than 10 books. There's translation of books in numerous languages. So again, good for your L's. Another one, um, another digital resource I'm gonna share with you is Story Nori, and there's the website. This is more towards younger kids. They say on the website their audio and digital stories are for grades one to eight. I feel it tends to lean a little bit elementary. They're just like the Audible stories. Some of those books are Story Nora exclusive, so they're not a book that maybe you're familiar with or heard of before. They do have a mix of fiction and nonfiction. And they are also read by actual people. Again, it's nice not to always have that digitized voice. But um, I will say with Story Nori, some of the books, you know, it's not the greatest selection of books, but it is free. Unite for Literacy is another source of some resources. There's the, I have these all hyperlinked. These are digital library books, specifically for preschool and primary grades. So we're thinking your um, younger kids. Um, you can get them in, in, in written language, so there's the text. You can get in English or Spanish. However, you can, they also have, I, they are digital books, but they all can be narrated. There's a little button you click. There are over 50 different languages you can get them narrated in. Plus, in terms of accessibility, UDL, they even have them translated into ASL, American Sign Language. So 
while the student's looking at the book, there's actually little videos of sign language interpreters telling the story. And I was watching one of them the other day and it was, I've never seen that before. So that's a real different aspect that this one offers that some of the other ones don't. But yes, there are many languages you can get them translated in. Again, I always like that's read a lot by actual people. That digitized um, speech is a lot harder to understand. When it's read by human voice, it's much easier. The last resource I'm gonna share, and this is really one that is most appropriate for your special education students. Your students who maybe have a little bit higher needs, things like think your students may be on the autism spectrum, students in life skills placements, students who have multiple disabilities. These books are probably most, um, most relevant for those populations. But I, I also say working with MDS and life skills students for years, I loved Tar Heel Reader. Tar Heel Shared Reader is brand new, so I haven't had too much experience with it. But I have a hyperlink to Tar Heel Reader. It's called Tar Heel because it comes out of UNC. What it's designed for, it's designed for, you can use it with your young readers, but it's really designed for children with special needs. What they are is um, they're basically PowerPoints of books on various topics. It's a mix of fiction, nonfiction. You can search and you can create. And now some of them are created by students, which is awesome. So if you're looking for an online option for your students to create, this is a great way to do it. But when you search, you might wanna look at the star ratings because just because students made some of these and sometimes you get some that aren't really gonna be what you want. But what I really like about Tar Heel Reader, it's a variety of nonfiction topics in simple li simpler language like if you're or you could use it for if a student's really you know really interested in trains there's very simple books on trains if you have students who are learning about the life cycle of a caterpillar very simple stories for that you can also download these books to your computer which is a nice option that the other ones do not have and it's read aloud. You can pick, it's read aloud, but it's a digitized voice. You have the choice of child, adult male, adult female. That's going to be your personal preference, but it's nice that it has that option for it to be narrated, but unfortunately, it is a digitized voice. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to understand. Tar Heel Shared Reader, again, this is new. Uh, I just found out about this, I want to say a month or two ago so it's fairly new but it's basically Tar Heel Reader but it's designed obviously as it says to be a shared to have shared reading as an aspect of it having a shared reading component so in addition to just showing the PowerPoint of the story the picture book there are actually icons thinking um, for your augmentative alternative communication user, users, your pre-verbal um, students. There are, I believe, I'm not sure if they're PCS symbols or symbol sticks, I don't remember, but if you're familiar with AAC, you'll know what I'm talking about. But there are icons that come up on the bottom, so you as a teacher can share the reading, and then they can select the icons to communicate about the book or to comment. And that's the added component that Shared Reader has that Tar Heel Reader does not have. But, I, but they have, Tar Heel Reader has more books because the Shared Reading's just a little bit different. But again, these two, Tar Heel Reader and Shared Reader, are really designed for your students with um, disabilities, especially those with more significant disabilities, so they can participate in digital reading and shared reading like their peers. If you have any particular questions about any of the resources I've gone over today, you can certainly contact me at my email address. Um, you can, I've been posting resources on Twitter. I try to post something daily, and there's a link to my Zoom room for when I have my open office hours. I believe I have some scheduled for next Tuesday. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Don't forget, you can find our schedule of our webinars on our Learn On website. And there's a mix, and the office hours are also listed there. And please be sure to fill out the Learn On web evaluation, and please be sure to fill out your 
um, Act 48 form for credit. You will be redirected as soon as the webinar is over. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much.